Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday, and we are on to another position. And this position, admittedly, I will acknowledge, probably not the position you need to address in free agency. This is probably a position for the draft. Normally, at least. It depends on the class. It depends on the kinds of players who are coming out. It depends on who is available. But generally speaking, I would say that in this team situation, the Seahawks situation, you would probably prefer to do it through the draft. I'm talking about nickel cornerback or slot cornerback, however you want to phrase it. But either way, I think we're going to need a little bit of help here. So let's run it down. Let's try to process all this. So Kobe Bryant played most of 2022 at nickel and he played okay. It was all right. Like, it wasn't bad or anything. I mean, it was bad sometimes, right? It had bad moments. But there were also some good moments. There were also some really good moments. But at the end of the day, I look at Kobe Bryant and I say, this is not his best position. He'd be better at outside corner. He might be better at safety. Why would I want a good player like Kobe Bryant seems to be to be playing at a position where he can only be average when I know if I move him to another position, he's going to be above average, good, maybe even really good. So if possible, I would like to take a look at the true slot cornerbacks in this upcoming free agency class and also the draft and try to find somebody. Now, we've got Pete Carroll and he's usually pretty good at this, right? He doesn't need to spend a ton of money doesn't need to spend a ton of draft capital to get good players at this position. I would say that his strength is probably outside corner, but we brought in some fairly prolific nickel corners in his time. Guys like Jeremy Lane, guys like uh, Walter Thurman III. Um, I, honestly, Walter Thurman III might have been my favorite nickel cornerback that we had during the uh, uh, Carroll era. Um, Justin Coleman was a really good nickel cornerback for a little bit there. So much so we brought him back this year and then he barely played. So that's not the solution. But um, even though I don't think it's likely we need to or we should or we will address this position via an expensive high-end free agent, let's talk about it for a minute here. Let's go through some of the bigger names who are going to be available at the nickel corner spot. Understanding that while I think we need to talk about it, I don't think it's likely. I don't want to dismiss any possibility here, but you, you get it. You guys get what I'm saying. Okay, so Bradley Roby would be the first guy up here, and this guy, I'm going to kind of put a big old beware, buyer beware tag on him. Um, he's about to turn 31, which doesn't sound terrible, but you have to remember he's playing a position where the slightest drop in ability, like the tiniest drop in ability kills you. Like, you go from running a 4-3-3 to a 4-3-5, and everything just feels like it's different. So, Bradley Roby has had a pretty good career, played many years for the Broncos, was part of their no-fly zone, went to Houston for a couple years, then he went to New Orleans for these last couple years. Hasn't played a full season since, basically, he was with the no-fly zone in Denver. And he he is a pretty born and bred nickel corner, I will say that. So Bradley Roby has spent most of his career, to my knowledge, playing nickel corner, so he's at least giving you that much. Unfortunately, what he would also give you is a 2022 season where it just wasn't very good. His grade was terrible. Now, the good news is you go back to 2021, the grade is actually solid, decent, effective. And then you go back to 2020, it's good. Yeah, 71.5 is good for a nickel corner in this league. So he's got good play in recent memory, but I, he he turned 30 right before the last season started. So you could look at this and go, the cliff came. Like, the cliff has already hit Bradley Roby. And because of that, I don't think he's going to cost a lot of money. He hasn't been nearly as relevant of a player in the last couple of years. But... At the same time, I don't want to be left holding the bag on somebody. And you look at it, Bradley Roby made $10.5 million last year playing for the Saints. I'm sure he'll be willing to take a lot less than that. 
probably something like a one year five million deal, maybe maybe even a little bit less than that, maybe like one year four million. But I don't think he's going to take like the veteran minimum like Justin Coleman did. Like Justin Coleman took very little money, so when he ended up not really playing for us, it didn't matter. It was fine. So Bradley Roby is going to be a nickel corner who gets a lot of buzz this offseason because he's a bigger name, he's done good things in his career, and he's been he's prolific, let's put it that way. But I'm definitely seeing some warning signs here. The age definitely puts me off. The price tag, which I think will be more than like vet min type stuff, puts me off. So I had to mention him because he's going to be one of the notorious, the big names at nickel corner this year. But I'm not really seeing how it makes any sense for the Seahawks to go after him. Uh, next up, we have Jonathan Jones of the New England Patriots, going to turn 30 this year. Or, well, 30 right after the season starts, so maybe you could put a little bit of a warning sign on him as well. But he's been a Patriot for quite some time now. He won a couple Super Bowls with New England. And he's been a fairly consistently good presence as a uh, nickel cornerback. Uh, PFF continually had him ranked as one of the best nickel corners in the league basically year after year. <coughs> Active ball hawk, and he's coming off a season where he actually had four interceptions, which was a career high. So he played every game but one. He's making plays on the ball like he never has before. Seems to me that the cliff has not yet come for Jonathan Jones. He's still a very effective nickel corner. Uh, PFF thought that his 2022 season was quite good. They gave him a grade of about 68. So that beat the hell out of what he did in 2021 when he barely played, right? So seems like this guy can still ball out. So... If you want to spend a little bit bigger at the nickel corner position, I think Jonathan Jones is a good option. Um, now, when I say spend bigger, I do mean that. Spotrack estimates two years, $25 million, So just shy of $12.5 million a year. Um, again, unless things have just drastically changed with our process, I don't think it ever makes sense to pay a corner this kind of money unless he's best in the league material, like Richard Sherman type stuff. So this price tag definitely kind of puts me off of it. But Jonathan Jones has to be talked about if you're trying to figure out how to patch the nickel corner problem that we have right now. A little more interesting to me would be a guy like Cameron Sutton of the Pittsburgh Steelers. A little bit younger, he's about to turn 28, and he's just kind of slowly been brought up through that Pittsburgh system. Didn't play all that much his first four years in the league. Last two years has played a lot. And the results have been good. He makes some plays on the ball. This most recent year, he had almost one pass deflection every game he played. Well, one per game that he played. And he, um, in his age 27 year, kind of had a little bit of a breakout. It, it took a while to prime the pump with him. But once he got going, he got going. And you can see, um, while he hasn't played a lot in some of those years, you can see he's been active in almost every game over the last five years, so stayed relatively healthy, unlike a guy like a Bradley Roby. PFF is high on him, 71.6 grade in his most recent breakout year, which nice improvement over 2021. And they estimate that his contract will be a little bit more reasonable, three years, 23 million, so about 7.6 average annual value. I don't know if I would do that either, don't get me wrong. Um, I don't know if you need to do that with Pete Carroll on your coaching staff, but... I think he's probably worth it, and that has to be considered here. Maybe you don't like the nickel cornerbacks in this draft. Maybe you don't want to cheap out and just cross your fingers that some random guy for two million bucks is going to be able to hold it down. Then I think a Cameron Sutton makes a lot of sense if that is the position that you're in as Pete Carroll. So he would probably be my top guy to take a look at here. Another guy that I would put near the top of the list would be Troy Hill. Um, Troy Hill, granted, getting older. He's about to turn 32. That is definitely a point where you have to start wondering. But he didn't play badly last year for the Rams. He's played fairly well recently. Um, he played well for the Rams in 2020. He played, um, well, not so great for Cleveland in 2021, but then he went back to the Rams last year and seemed to do all right, seemed to do pretty well for himself. So... Even though he's older than some of these other guys, I look at Troy Hill and I go, it seems like he has a little bit left in the tank. So I kind of feel like 
Troy Hill is a good option if you're trying to improve the nickel corner position with a natural nickel corner, but you don't want to break the bank on it, but you want a proven commodity. Uh, PFFs thought that he did a perfectly adequate job in 2022. They gave him a grade of about 65, said he was a really good tackler as well. And one thing to note is I believe Troy Hill plays on the outside on non-nickel packages. So he slides into the nickel, which is his best position on nickel downs, meaning that this grade is probably a little depressed from that, right? And you can see even in Cleveland when he was, I believe, playing on the outside on a more regular basis, his grade was not bad. So even though this guy's old, feels like you could get some good play out of him. And Spotrack, because of his age and because he's not playing amazing, estimates his market value to be about one, th one year, 3.7 million. That's like double what you gave Justin Coleman last year, right? So you bring him in on that price, you don't need a ton of production to justify the cost. So that to me would be a really good option as well. Again, if you don't like the draft class, if you don't like the rookie nickel corners that are coming out, or you don't think you're going to be able to get any, and you really don't want to go to war with Kobe Bryant again, then I'm definitely looking to bring in a sure thing, especially if you're going to go for it in 2023. If you are, you can't have Kobe Bryant playing out of position in your secondary on a large percentage of your snaps. That's just bad business. So um, these would be the top guys I would look at. Not really on the Bradley Roby train, but everybody else here, I think, deserves at least some consideration because they are their play is probably going to match their pay. So let me know what you guys think. These are the top nickel cornerbacks to my estimation. Uh, I'll see you guys later. Go Hawks. More videos later.